Yo, what up fam, you know what it is, it's your boy Neil Lion, Lion Heritage TV. Thank you for giving me over a thousand views, you know, I'm so grateful, thank you. If you have not watched my first video on the Gang Adangbe, you can check it out on Lion Heritage TV. You can subscribe, you can comment, and you can share. Today we're going to look at the Ashantis and where they came from. Big thank you to Andy, thank you for the help you gave to me, thank you so much. You know, and then also, you can leave a comment, you know, tell me on the next tribe you want me to do. Thank you. I'm so grateful for the love and for the support. Lion Heritage TV, you know what it is. Thank you, man. I'm out. Between the 10th century, the ethnic Akan people migrated into the forest belt of southern Ghana and established several Akan states. Ashanti, also known as Asante, are part of the Akan ethnic group. Ashanti or Asante, warlike, strong, undefeated as called by the French, are native to Ashanti region of modern-day Ghana. Chui is spoken by the Ashanti people. Now, the Akan ethnic group is the largest group in Ghana and West Africa. The Akans are made up of the Asantis or Ashantis whom we are looking at now. They include the Fantis, Tentra, Bono, Equiapim, Achim, Awin, Ahanta, Ani, Baule, Weu, Sishi, Ahafo, Asin, Wasa, Nzma, amongst many, many others. The Ashantis develop in what is now or what we call central ghana around the 13th century by the 17th century they had become powerful and worthy from both the slave trade and the gold trade there have been lots of debate as to the exact place the ashantis came from but a close source claims they migrated after the fall of the ghana empire from the vicinity of the northwestern niger river whilst others stayed and migrated until the fall of the mali empire so that is it after the rise of the bonoman kingdom in the 12th and the 13th centuries due to the gold boom and trade many akan states or people migrated out of them to create new akan states which eventually led to the fall of the bonoman states and the rise of the Aquamu empire around the 14th century which played a major role in the establishing of the Ashanti Empire. Now, how did the Kwamu Empire play a major role in the Ashanti Empire? It played a major role because the first king of the Ashantis, Osaitutu, was protected by Nana Ansa Sasraku from the Dentra. Osaitutu's father, Osu Penin, was from Abrankese Nyamieni, and mother, Menu Kotusi, was from Kokofu. That is why the people of Kokofu celebrate the Opemso festival in honor of the first king of the Ashantis, Osei Tutu I. The sister of Otia Kenten and Obri Yeboa, the late kings of Kwaman. When Menu Kotusi was unable to have children, her brother Obri Yeboa sent him to a shrine priest called Ututu in Equiapim for help. Later, she gave birth to a boy called Osei Kufi and named him Tutu after the shrine. So you can see Tutu after the shrine. So we have what Osei Tutu. I hope you get it. And Kwaman was under Dentra. Kwaman was still under Dentra. When Osei Tutu became a boy, he was sent to serve at the court of Boa Amponsem. Boa Amponsem was the then king of Dentra. Osei Tutu ran from Dentra back and he was received by the then Otunfo ancestor Sasraku and treated him well. Osei Tutu later met Kwame Frimpong, a.k.a. Okonfo Anoche. So, Okonfo Anoche. And after his uncle, Obri Yeboa, died in war against Doma, Osei Tutu became the king, but he was still king under Dentra. He was still king. But he was so keen under the intra. In the late 17th century, 
the Ashanti king Osaitu II and his advisor Okonfuanoche established the Ashanti kingdom. Now, how did they do that? How did they do it? Now, before all these things happened, the Ashanti political organization was originally based on clans headed by paramount chiefs. Kwaman chief Utiakenten and other chiefs or clans settled in the tropical forest region, establishing a center which we now call Kumasi. The Ashantis were tributaries to another Akan state. So it means that the Ashantis, they, pay, uh, they paid tributaries to uh, Dintra. They paid tributes and other stuff to Dintra. But by the 17th century, under Osetutu, he started consolidating the Ashanti clans into a loose confederation against the Dintra because they wanted independence. According to a legend, there was a meeting of some paramount chiefs of Ashantis to declare independence from Dintra. And in this same meeting, Okonfo Anoche commanded the golden stool from heaven, which floated into the lap of Osetutu. So as he floated into the lap of Osetutu, he became the Asantehene. So he became Osetutu the first. Yes, so the golden stool played a major role here. And so he became Opemsuo Osetutu the first. I already, I already told you about Opemswa. I told you the people from uh, Kokofu, they celebrate that festival. Forming the new Asante Union or Ashanti Kingdom, and then they declared war on the Dintra and they won. The Ashanti defeated the Dintra in the Battle of Feyase, declaring independence in 1701. They then conquered more surrounding states. And the successor, Opokuari I, extended the borders to even further and further and further lands. Now, the Ashantis, they were warlike people. They fought many, many wars, especially against the British. They even won some of the wars. Now, let's look at what happened. After the former palace of the Asantehene was burned by the British in 1874, after the Third Anglo-Ashanti War, another one was built to the returning king upon his return from exile in 1925, Prempe the I, which is uh, now Mesha Palace Museum. So if you go to the Mesha Palace Museum, you can see. Originally, the first one was built somewhere around 1819, adorned with gold described by the British as a place of immense wealth. The place was very beautiful, the architecture, the design of the palace, it was unimaginable. The Ashanti flag was adopted by Asantehene Prempe II in 1935, based on the Ashanti absolute monarchy throne and the golden stool, which is the Ashanti people's symbol of unity and is believed to possess the soul of the Ashanti people, which they call Sunsum. The national emblem is a porcupine, and there is a popular saying, Oku Apem Apembeba. If you kill thousands, thousands will still come up. They never give up. Numerous Asantis or a section of Asantis trace their ancestry to Akwemu and Dintra. Especially, this included people from Asafo and Edum. The Ashantis mostly live in the Ashanti region of Ghana with their capital, Kumase. Let's look at some of the beliefs of the Ashanti people. They believe in plants, they believe in animals, they believe in trees. Why? Because they say these things have what? Souls. They believe in lesser gods, Abosum and Nyame, the supreme being. They like to dress in gold ornaments and kente because of the immense wealth and the culture of the Ashanti people. The festival of the Ashantis is Akwesidae Kese or Ujura festival. So we have looked at the briefing of the Ashanti people, where they came from, how they settled in Ghana, and then their first king. So we are still looking at where they came from.
so you can comment you can like you can share the video and also tell me the next tribe you want me to talk about and on where they came from series so we are just looking at the tribes in ghana and in africa you know what it is lion heritage tv thank you and i'm out